asked question is what is CV in a control valve? So we look at the concept first and then the definition. So let's get into it. The first thing is that whether you have a temperature control valve, pressure, level of flow control valve, actually they are nothing but a simple control valve which has only one basic function which is to control the flow within the valve. Now how does CV help in that is in the more a tool so that you can compare flow capacity from any valve throughout the world. But let us dig into this concept in such a way that we'll remember this concept forever. As we had initially discussed, imagine that for valve A and for valve B, we have a different flow rate. Valve A has a flow rate of 10 GPM and valve B has a flow rate of 5 GPM. Here, as we had said, we cannot say that this means that valve A has the higher flow capacity. Why? Because there could be the case that both the valves are made of the exact same construction, same size, but the pressure drop across the first valve is 15 psi, while the pressure drop across the second valve is just 1 psi. So we know that as you increase the pressure drop across the valve, the flow through the valve increases. So this flow increases just because of pressure drop and not because of the valve size. So here, if we want to compare two valves flow capacity, we have to keep them under the same pressure. So let us take a standard of 1 psi as pressure between the two valves. Again, now what I do is, I'll measure the flow between the two valves. But here I see the flow between the first valve was 10 GPM and the flow with the second valve was 4 GPM. Why? There could be the case that for the first valve the fluid was water and for the other valve the fluid was honey. Now we all know in such cases that honey is very dense so it will have a lower flow rate as compared to water. So even though the valves are made of same construction we have to also ensure that the liquid between them is the same if we want to compare the flow capacity between two walls. So let us select water because water is one of the most available substance and very easy to be found at any site or at any vendor location. Now let's keep water for both the valves. I've kept the same pressure drop, I've kept the same liquid. Ideally I should get the flow rate to be same. But for this valve I get 10 GPM as the flow rate and for this valve which is valve P I'm getting 12 GPM. Now what is the issue? Here there's another parameter which comes into play which is the temperature. So both water being the same fluid might have different temperatures. So first maybe at 60 degree Fahrenheit and the other one might be at 150 degree Fahrenheit. So we know as the temperature increases there's again a difference in flow rate. So we will have to maintain a constant temperature as well. So we will select 60 degree Fahrenheit. A lot of people ask that in CV definition why 60 degree Fahrenheit is specially taken. The answer is because the specific gravity of water is 1 at 60 degree Fahrenheit. So this will help greatly when we are doing CV calculations. So we'll have three standard parameters which is the PSI drop is 1 PSI, the water is the fluid which is taken and the temperature is 60 degree Fahrenheit. That being the case, we can say the definition of CV is as follows. CV is the number of US gallons of water that can flow through a valve with one PSI pressure drop at 60 degree Fahrenheit for one minute. So this is the definition of CV. Also I want to share one more thing that I produce a new video every Saturday. So if you want to learn something new every Saturday, please click on the bell icon and subscribe so that you can learn a new video. The most asked question, the all time favorite of any interviewer which has been asked in the last three decades is what is cavitation, flashing and choke flow. So use the graph which will be shown now so that you can give a more convincing answer and that would help in your explanation. So imagine this is your valve put in a line. Now with the flow there is some restriction put so you are going to have a DP or a differential pressure created to it. So the upstream pressure is P1 and the downstream pressure is P2. Now imagine that this is your vapor pressure curve. So what happens when the fluid is going to be at this particular uh, region? 
the fluid is going to change from liquid state to vapor state and this stage is called as the point where the liquid changes to vapor phase now at the exact opposite side if you notice the va the vapor is going to turn back into liquid state here what is going to happen is the the bubbles are going to burst to come back to liquid state which is called as popping which has very high velocities that can damage the valve and the piping downstream this entire phenomenon is called as cavitation now we look into the next case which is when there is flow to the valve but what happens is the pressure downstream does not recover this happens when the pressure downstream is still below the vapor pressure curve this phenomenon here makes the liquid to still stay in the vapor pressure phase in the downstream and this phenomenon is called as flashing what happens here is imagine that this is your valve and this is your pressure drop happening we are very sure with the concept that if we increase dp there is going to be an increase in flow but we keep increasing dp at a point of time flow will not increase this point is called as choked flow for this third question now the interviewer is looking for thought process and usually this question is asked which is usually can be used for variety of instruments that is material selection so we look into packing material selection as an example but you can use this concepts of the pressure temperature chemical compatibility etc which is to be used while an engineer comes towards selection of the material so let's get into it the first thing is imagine this is water and here's our boat placed into it the first thing is you need an engine to run the boat and there has to be a rod that has to be penetrated through the boat and here would be a propeller which would help the boat to go forward now here's an interesting thing if you look at this point water can enter through this location into your boat and if the water enters you know what's going to happen right the boat is going to sink so for this concept what will we do we add something called as a stuffing box now stuffing box as the name suggests is basically you're stuffing something inside so that the water cannot penetrate through this barrier and come inside the boat sounds very simple right and the first thing is the more we stuff the more safe we are that the water will not enter inside the engine or the boat but if you see here if we are putting a lot of pressure what is the adverse effect that can happen so if it's very tight then there is no movement that the propeller has so much friction that it might not be able to move okay so we might keep it loose right but if we keep it very loose the other issue is that the fluid will enter the engine so this is another issue this same concept also applies for a control valve here let's take the same example of boat and now let's put a control valve so both these places require a packing here same is for control valve but for a boat the concept is still little simple because the liquid is finally what water even if little bit enters what's the issue but the control valve has to go through a lot of services corrosive erosive toxic etc so it's not that easy as it looks like okay now you would ask me let's get to the basics so for a simple control valve what are the basic packing materials that we use usually these two materials are one of the most used materials the first one being is ptfe and the second one being is graphite these are actual pictures of how a ptfe and graphite looks like so if you see the picture one ptfe is around something you could say whitish complexion and graphite is shiny blackish in color which is also sometimes referred to as flexible graphite now with respect to chemical compatibility ptfe is the most compatible with almost majority of the services but then why do we have graphite because of temperature limitation so ptfe usually as a thumb rule you can say suggest up to 200 degree celsius while graphite can go up till 600 degree celsius however for graphite also you need to ensure from the material certificate what is the maximum limit but as a thumb rule you can consider this also notice that is it compatible with the service now is it only these two factors nothing else is required for packing let us look at an interesting case now imagine that you have a valve put in a line and there is a site person who is inspecting the valve now the valve has slight leakage okay it's very slight 
but the edge point is maybe h2s which is leaking or maybe some very toxic service or lethal service there are certain services which if the operator or the plant person just inhales for a few seconds they could die it's that grievous also if you have for example a hundred valves in a plant or 500 valves which are continuously emitting these toxic gases in the environment then even that's very harmful right so you have something called as fugitive emissions where the authorities give you a certain limit beyond which your valve should not be allowing leakage but how do you ensure that you are able to meet such criteria engineers have come up with some very interesting concept in order to meet such stringent criteria, let's look at the first one which is called as live load packing now this concept will try to understand with an hypothetical valve example so here's my packing material which is put in the valve now the valve in normal operation will keep on operating throttling the valve and the flow through it but if you notice eventually the packing is going to get worn out and maybe it's not able to provide that much pressure so engineers came up with a spring which is usually used and that creates a positive pressure on the packing material if you want to see an actual real life example see here the white thing is nothing but your packing which seems to be ptfe as we said it's white in color and you can see a spring assembly also so it kind of puts a positive pressure to keep the packing in place interesting right now this is not it still there could be certain issues like the spring has failed or the spring is itself the tension is reduced do we have another amazing way yes we do have it let's look at the next amazing way. the next amazing way is something called as bellow seal this is a level up even than live loading but how does it work let's see here's your standard packing which is available now here are your bellows and here's something called as a leak detection port we'll look into it at the later part of it but right now let's first focus on the bellow bellow is an uninterrupted tube and if you see it has no place for the leaks to be developed also the bellows are extremely flexible so neither there is any leakage chance nor is going to create any friction because it's completely flexible the only one issue is what if the bellow ruptures so for that case here at the leak detection point we can put a pressure transmitter so anytime the bellows fail there is a rupture the pressure at this chamber is going to increase and we can get an alarm but the leakage is great 